Hey everybody, it's Adam. I am about to embark on a one day build. Now in previous one day builds, you have seen me use all manner of the tools in my shop at my disposal and the materials that I am used to working with. I've used resins and woods and metals and aluminums. I've machined, I've laid, I've sanded, I've cut, I've carpentried. I don't think that's a verb. Okay, but today's one day build is going to be a large build, but it is only going to be using one tool and one material. We're going back to basics. I often say that corrugated cardboard is the gateway drug for making. Well, it's more grown up cousin is one of my favorite of all time materials foam core or foam board. Uh, and this is a board that has paper on both sides with a foam in the middle. It comes in various thicknesses. The tool, a humble exacto handle with a number 11 blade. This isn't technically the only tool we'll be using. We will also be using some straight edges and some glue, but this is the main one. This is the one that matters. And what I'm going to build is actually something pretty cool. I'm going to build the house I grew up in. Now, the house I grew up in is in Terrytown, New York, and my mom moved out of there about eight years ago. Uh, but before she did, I had some plans made of the entire house, and that's what these are. These are full-size 124 scale plans of my childhood home, and I'm going to use these to make a foam core architectural model of my childhood house. I think we'll also use this as a reason to take a walk down memory lane, for instance. Okay, let's get started. All right, ooh, nice stuff. Um, this build is going to take a fair bit of uh, foam board. Uh, I hope I have enough, but if I don't, the art store isn't that far away. What I'm gonna start with is the floors. Uh, the plan view floor of each, the basement, first floor, second floor, and the attic. Um, that's mainly because this is the most amount of detail to transfer from the paper to the foam core. The transfer is gonna be just a little bit tricky and the walls go much faster once you have them. So first up is all four of the floors transferred from the pattern to the foam core. Um, when I'm done, this will be 1 24th scale. That's one half of dollhouse scale. So in 1 24th scale, a person is about three inches tall. practice of building architectural models of houses. Uh, I started when my wife and I bought our first house here in San Francisco. I wanted to understand this house that we had purchased. So I built an architectural model of that out of foam core. And it's a way for me to kind of put the whole house into my head. It allows me to understand this thing. And I have always wanted to do it for my childhood home, but I have not gotten around to it up to this point. Now, most of the, t both times I've done it before, I've just run around my house with a tape measure making my own blueprints. This is a real luxury to work from some actual plants. Uh, and I think it's gonna go a little bit faster. Why yes. This is a black wing. So the technique I'm doing for transferring this is that I'm using this nice soft black wing pencil and I've traced the details. I've actually drawn right over the lines and I'm gonna transfer those to my foam core like this. This is gonna be very cool. See that? Ho! Oh. It transfers the line from the paper to the foam core, and that gives me my internal dimensions. All right, uh, I have traced all the lines, I believe, uh, enough as reference points. So here we go, here's my big reveal. And ta-da, yes, awesome. Let's refine some of these lines, shall we? Ooh. 
Oh, it's my own bounce car. There we go. Ah, I'm very nicely lit. Uh, one of the cool features of foam core, and we used this technique at ILM all the time, is that it cuts beautifully on the table saw. It leaves some little raggedy edges, but you can sand those off, and it's a very fast way to cut uh, foam core to size. All right, the first piece gets glued in right there. Here we go. All right, this is my first door template. <laughs> um, and that goes in here. Now, one of the things about hot glue that you will run into when you're playing with hot glue and foam core is that a standard hot glue gun tends to be a little hot for the foam core. And what I mean is that when you uh, put glue on the side of the foam core where the foam is, if your heat gun, hot glue gun is too hot, um, it will bubble up and you'll actually see it because it'll start to fry the, um, the foam and it will bubble. Now, I have this more advanced hot glue gun here, which I like because I can set the temperature a little bit lower, um, and that allows me a little more control over the hot glue to keep it from bubbling. Um, the other advantage that being able to dial the temperature down a little bit, it means that the hot glue sets faster, um, which is both good and bad. It limits the amount of time you've got, but it also means that once you touch something, it's glued, and that's pretty vital, actually. Uh, you might wonder what these little steel blocks I'm using to level things up are. They're called one, two, three blocks. Uh, and they're a standard machinist's tool, but they're fantastic for foam core construction because they have weight, they're perfectly square, they give you basically ways to sort of clamp foam core in place. And they're not that expensive. You can purchase a pair of these on Amazon for like 15 or 20 bucks and they'll be good for you forever. Um, I've got five or six sets because I use them for clamping on my mill. One, two, three blocks. You're welcome. All right, now I've done most of the assembly of this floor with a single X-Acto blade and I can feel it starting to pill. Um, and pill means if you, did you hear that? So when you start to cut and then you look in and you see that the blade is grabbing like that, that means that it's no longer as sharp and you should immediately get rid of it. Now, this right here, the first seven stitches I ever got in my body were from one of these. They're insanely sharp and dangerous and you should not just throw them away. Um, a reasonable way to get rid of them is to put them like that so they won't injure uh, your garbage man or to put them in something like this. That's uh, where we store our uh, extra blades at Industrial Light and Magic. We put them in empty soda cans. I know, I know. I said I was only going to use the X-Acto blade, but as long as I got the bandsaw here, you won't mind if I use it. <laughs> that right there is the sound of the basement being basically done. So just to recap, uh, that was the billiard room. My first shop, my first official shop that was mine was built in right here. Um, and I'll build that workbench in. This was the entryway to the basement. Um, this was where the laundry room was, and this was deep storage, and our furnace went right here. And I think this was like a secondary chimney. I don't exactly know. All right, so having completed uh, the basement here, it's now time to add the first floor. And this gets tricky because uh, I need these things to line up to each other. And that means that there's a chimney, there's some staircases, and all this, many of these things have to, uh, 
line up. So the first step is to cut out the stair hole and make sure that that and the chimney talk to each other correctly uh, so that I get these, this thing to stack properly. I think I want to put some of this back. Because you're cutting with an X-Acto blade, you have what's called a zero kerf. That means there is no width of the cut. It is zero width. And that means that you can put chunks back in and they'll behave and act just like they were always there, like that one. All right, I have, uh, I've done the basement. I have done the first floor and I am rapidly getting ready to start on the second floor, uh, which is where my room was. That was my room. A lot of trouble happened in there. Uh, and then onto the attic that goes on top, but I'm going to take a breather and what you're gonna see now is a lot of time lapses. Yeah, time lapses and then we'll check back in with you. And there, let's see, yep, there we go. This is one day build, my childhood home in foam core. Nothing but an X-Acto blade, a glue gun, and some plans. And like I said, I've done this uh, for more than a couple of houses that I've owned specifically so that I can put it in my head. Okay, I want to address one thing. I know that I grew up in, in an inordinately large house. Just to point out, I was not rich growing up. My parents were solidly middle class. They were part of the first exodus of Bohemians from the West Village in New York to Westchester County in New York. And so in 1970, a house like this was really a, about a year's salary. It's like, well, maybe a little more than a year's salary. Uh, it was very affordable for middle-class parents, unlike today. So before you'd be like, yo, rich kid, check out your big home. Um, this was the 70s and it was a lot more accessible to people. Ha, anyway, that was our one day build. See you guys next time.